Let's just start by bringing you up to speed with what is happening in Ukraine. It's day two of the Russian invasion into Ukraine. Its forces continue to press deep into Ukraine. The battle has reached the outskirts of Ukraine's capital, Kiev. In a midnight address, Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky said that his country was left alone to fight Russia after the Kremlin launched full-scale invasion. He also warned that Russian sabotage groups had entered the capital, urged residents to remain vigilant and observe curfew rules. Але є й друге. Ми залишаємось на одинці у захисті нашої держави. Хто готовий воювати разом з нами? Чесно, не бачу таких. Хто готовий дати Україні гарантію вступу до НАТО? Чесно, всі бояться. Across Ukraine, at least 137 people have been killed in the first day of fighting. President Zelensky called up conscripts, reservists, countrywide to come and fight as he ordered general mobilization. Till now, over 100,000 people have been displaced as Russian missiles and shelling rained down on Ukrainian cities. The first Ukraine refugees have already begun trickling into Hungary and Romania. And for more on this, we're now being joined by Eugene Shosovsky, a non-resident fellow at Newslines Institute. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, how effective do you think these new sanctions announced by President Joe Biden, also the EU, would prove to be at this point? Well, I think at this point, the sanctions are clearly not going to be a deterrent factor on Russian military action, which has already begun and will continue to take place at least for the next several days. Uh, but as Biden mentioned in his address today, the sanctions are intended to severely weaken the Russian economy and then by that nature to force Putin to reconsider or at least make these actions much more costly. But I think it'll take at least a few weeks till we, we know for sure the impact of the sanctions on the Russian economy, although we're starting to see some initial signs right now. All right. And how would you assess Putin's objectives here and its impact in Europe? Right. So Putin has made it clear that the ultimate objective, and it's not exactly clear how he will achieve this, but the goal is to completely demilitarize Ukraine and essentially neutralize it. Uh, so that means that Ukraine will no longer be seeking to join the EU and especially NATO. And whether that happens by political capitulation or by military force, that's the stage that we're in right now. But I think that Putin will not stop at anything until he gets that ultimate goal, which is to basically to uh, neutralize completely Ukraine. Right. And this conflict, of course, threatens to displace millions of people. Residents have already started crossing over to Poland. What can we expect now? Certainly refugee flows will start to flow. Um, we're already seeing the initial signs of that, as you mentioned. But I, I do think that the Ukrainian military at least in these very early stages, has put up quite a, a strong fight and an indication that it's not it's going to defend uh, to the best of its abilities. Um, we're still in the very early stages, as I mentioned, of the uh, intervention, but I think this is going to be a very long, um, if not long, then very costly fight for Russia. And the Ukraine, uh, Ukrainians will have at least some kind of support, albeit not direct, uh, from the West and from NATO. Right. And like you mentioned earlier, sanctions have done little to deter Russia. So what form of support can we now see for Ukraine apart from sanctions? Well, I think the sanctions could actually get more severe as we go along. But we've seen frontline NATO states, especially Poland and the Baltic states uh, and the U.S. itself as the NATO leader, provide weaponry for Ukraine, uh, provide basically logistical support, things of that nature. Now, it really depends on how the military phase plays out um, and in, in terms of whether Russia decides to try to uh, occupy major cities such as Kiev or other strategic sites, hmm. or it will try to cut off Ukrainian forces. But I think certainly uh, politically and in terms of materiel, we will see that support from NATO countries. 
Right, and also just for more clarity on this, how do you see the impact of this on international order? Well, certainly this has already shaken up the European security order. Um, and because this has already involved other countries, it's not just Russia, but Belarus, which has you know hosted Russian military troops. It's not clear whether Belarus has taken part actively in the campaign yet, but it certainly uh, played a host to those troops. So that uh, brings in another actor. And then you have Poland, uh, the Baltic states, Romania, frontline NATO countries, which are also uh, very likely to be directly impacted, at least in terms of refugees, but perhaps even some spillover. So clearly the European security order is now being tested significantly. And we could see this ripple out depending on the extent to which U.S. on the Ukrainian side and perhaps even China on the Russian side get involved. Right. Mr. Shosovsky, just before we wrap up, how do you assess the cost of this Russian invasion of Ukraine? Well, it's already coming at tremendous human cost um, as we're starting to see the casualties uh, begin. And I think it's going to be tremendously costly politically uh, for Putin and for Russia. We've, start, we've already started to see some protests within Russia against the actions. Those have right. been relatively small, but I think significant. But the costs will be high for sure. All right. Mr. Shosovsky, thank you so much for joining us with your insights on this. Thank you. Now, amid a raging conflict, French President Emmanuel Macron called Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin. Macron has demanded an immediate halt to Moscow's offensive in Ukraine. According to the Elise Palace, the French president called Vladimir Putin after having spoken with the Ukrainian president and in coordination with him, Macron demanded the immediate halt of Russian military operations. But the account by Macron's aides contrasted with, the, with that given by the Kremlin. The Kremlin said in a statement that Putin gave an exhaustive explanation to Macron. Putin reasoned why he ordered his forces into his pro-Western neighbor. The Kremlin said that the two leaders had a serious and frank exchange of views about Ukraine. This was the first known contact between Putin and a Western leader since the Kremlin ordered a massive invasion of Ukraine. The operation has been widely condemned by Western leaders with several ordering fresh sanctions on Moscow. Earlier on Thursday, the French president had told his nation, I'm quoting here, we will respond without weakness to this act of war. He had added that the Russian attack on Ukraine marked a turning point in the history of Europe and France. Today, Emmanuel Macron says that it is useful to keep alive the chance of dialogue. With Russian President Vladimir Putin, the statement came after a summit of EU leaders. In Macron's words, again quoting here, while condemning, while sanctioning, it remained useful to leave this path open so that the day when the conditions can be fulfilled, we can obtain a cessation of hostilities. Macron emerged as the West's chief negotiator in the final days before Putin raised the stakes. Macron has engaged in shuttle diplomacy between the Kremlin and the West as the French president is Europe's de facto leader and holds the presidency of the Council of the European Union. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now, get all the news on the move.